360 Sports Network. I'm Greg, the Mad Scientist for show, and with me tonight is Alex DeLaverson and James Dotson. Gentlemen, how are you this evening? I'm disappointed. I was hoping uh, we'd see the Miami Heat, San Francisco 49er type of form going on in the NFL, but unfortunately Manning chose the Broncos. But I'm disappointed. I thought we could have saw something special. Uh, I thought we were going to see Peyton Manning heading back to good old Rocky Top, Tennessee. But uh, apparently, Alex, you and I don't know what we're talking about. It's the mad scientist who gets everything correct when it comes to football, doesn't he? Well, I don't want to. I don't want to sound my horn here on this. But you know, you guys generally sound very disappointed. Uh, early on in the whole process, I stated that there were going to be two teams, perhaps three teams, that are, that were going to be courting Peyton Manning. The Arizona Cardinals, the Denver Broncos, and, uh, yeah, you even twisted my arm and said, well, okay, what about the Tennessee Titans? And I said, yeah, I, I see maybe the Tennessee Titans. But I just kind of had the uh, the feeling, just the, the back of my head, that it was going to be the, uh, the Denver Broncos only because of the John Elway factor. And, uh, you know, two great quarterbacks, one who ended his career just before uh, Peyton Manning entered the NFL. And, of course, uh, you have a fantastic head coach, a very hands-off head coach in John Fox, who's basically took a uh, Tim Tebow-led team running the triple option and actually led them into the second round of the playoffs last year as a first-year coach of the Broncos. So, you know, with that said, uh, I, I think all the elements of success are uh, with uh, the Broncos at this time frame. Well, I mean, I, you say I'm disappointed, and I am disappointed because I thought we really could have saw something special. And I'm all for the story, especially when it comes to in the NFL. And, I mean, come on, if Manny would have chose San Francisco, that would have been his best shot to win a Super Bowl. Think about it. Manning... Randy Moss, Mario Manningham, Veron Davis, Patrick Willis, Frank Gore, uh, Jim Harbaugh. I mean, just had all the pieces. And it could have been a really dominant like team there. And I still think the Niners will do well. But for some reason, I just don't think we're going to be, see, be seeing Peyton Manning win a championship with the Broncos. And I hope I'm wrong because I'm a Peyton Manning fan. But... It's not like the Broncos, uh, yeah, they made the playoffs last year, but were they 8-8 eight and eight and won that division and, you know, because of Tebow mania. And in a way, it's kind of like Denver. I mean, I would choose Manning over Tebow any day, but uh, I don't know. I thought he was going to go to Tennessee, but I wanted him to go to the Niners. Well, and you look at it, though, Alex. Uh, you look at did he go to the best possible team? You know what? Yeah, the 49ers were 13-3 and last year. Uh, look at the division. Look at the conference that they played in. And then also look back to what Indianapolis did. They went from a consistent 10, 11, 12 win team every year with Peyton Manning. As soon as Manning doesn't play a game for a year, and they're looking to be wrote, written down in history with 0-16 teams like the, the Tampa Bay Yucks and the Detroit Lions. So it's a it's a big difference, and if just going by that, the addition of Peyton Manning can easily turn an 8-8 eight and eight team, especially with that defense they have, easily from 8-8 eight and eight up to a 12-13 win team without much question. And it, exactly, the type of team that they already have under John Fox, he can, Peyton Manning can come right in, run his offense. Uh, who's the offensive coordinator out there? I think they might be out of a job. Well, I mean, Manning claims he's not going to be the OC there, but, you know, claiming something and doing it's a different story. But the okay. reason I thought he was going to go to Tennessee is, you know, that's where his wife has a house there. He went to the volunteers there. Um, I th actually thought he would have wanted a shot to play the Colts twice a year, but I guess uh, that he didn't want to play. He wanted to play in the AFC. I guess he didn't want to compete for the NFC title with his brother. And, I mean, I think that it's his decision, but... I wouldn't base one of your main factors around that if you're choosing a team. Well, I think, that, I think Dodson hit the nail right on the head. When you take a look at the AFC West division, that's one of the weakest divisions right now in professional football. 
uh, who basically is out there in that particular division? You have, okay, the Kansas City Chiefs. Ah, okay, you know, you take Matt Castle out of the equation, they're struggling a bit, okay? Uh, they had a very inconsistent year last year. You take a look at uh, the San Diego Chargers. Well, you know what, uh, for a team that's loaded with a lot of fantasy players and a lot of fantasy studs, that was a real, real snoozer this past year. Uh, and then, of course, you have uh, the Oakland Raiders and then, of course, the Denver Broncos. And you take a look at winning this division and making the playoffs consistently. You, with Peyton Manning at the helm over there, they have pretty much secured that, as long as he stays healthy. You also have two very, very productive receivers over, over there. Two, these two receivers, Demarius Thomas and Eric Decker, both well over six foot, both very quick, and you get somebody out there who has a quick release, and expect to see a lot of points to be put up on the board out there. And with the stingy defense that Denver has, uh, this is a team that's going to be reckoned with. Oh, I, I agree. Mean, well, the, the one uh, piece that they're missing is, and I'm sorry, Alex, the one piece they're missing uh, is a tight end. And I think you've hit this on the head, Alex, in looking at what possibly could happen. Dallas Clark is currently a free agent. You think that he's going to make his way following Peyton out to Denver? Well, I think it's a very large possibility. And, yeah, I mean, if Manny gets old, if Saturday ends up going to the Broncos, uh, Clark gets there, then, yeah, they definitely are going to be a force to reckon with. And if Manning's healthy, even without those guys, it will be. But Greg was talking about winning the AFC West. I mean, what about the NFC West? There are no other teams there that can compete, like the Cardinals and Rams. I mean, come on. But, I mean, whatever makes... Do, do you really think Peyton Manning wants to go to a team go to a team where he won't be competing? This is almost more of a competition for him by going to Denver. Well, he has to work harder. You, also, you think he doesn't want to do that? You also have to take a look, Alex, at the coaches. You you take a look at uh, at Jim Harbaugh, very competitive guy. Uh, actually, he would be playing for the uh, for the guy that he replaced out in Indianapolis, which you know it makes an interesting byline here. But you take a look at the coaching style of Jim Harbaugh versus the coaching style of John Fox. And you take a look at Peyton Manning, who's accustomed to running his own show and running his own plays. Do you think Jim Harbaugh would put up with that? I don't know. He might humor him a bit, but uh, Harbaugh is too much of a control freak, I believe, for Peyton Manning. Well, I mean, what is he, 36 now? I mean, like I said, whatever makes him happy. But I thought at that stage in his career... He'd want to get a ring, another ring or two. I thought San Fran was the best place. I don't know. I mean, I guess only time will tell. But I just uh, thought... Denver's was... on the brink already. They're on the brink already. There's no reason that they can't take the next step. And as long as Peyton Manning stays healthy, I don't see why they couldn't make a Super Bowl run. Well, I'd rather be already there than be on the brink. But I'm not Manning, I guess. So we'll see what happens. I think Manning, uh, well, first of all, uh, Peyton Manning is a class act all through and through. And uh, I think with all the dysfunction that happened up in Indianapolis with the Ursays and uh, and all the finger pointing and doing all of the uh, sticky and not-so-glamorous details, Peyton Manning kept to himself, kept his head down, literally, and uh, really didn't emerge in a uh, scandal uh, situation that could have uh, could have erupted if it were another quarterback like a Brett Favre or or somebody else. Uh, well, I mean, that, this is like this is like the decision of the NFL, except Peyton Manning didn't hold an hour long special and then crush everyone's heart on national TV. So he did handle the class, and the yeah, deal with the Broncos got done very quietly. So I applaud him for that. Right, right. And the, and, the, and the thing about Peyton Manning being that type of person, he calls his own shots. And he wants to do this his way, and I believe that's why he uh, chose Denver over other teams, such as Tennessee, who was going to offer him a lifetime contract. However, now, of course, if you're playing the Saints and you get a lifetime contract, it just might only be one game. I'm not sure. <laughs> but getting back to this thing, the the Denver Broncos provide Peyton Manning with every opportunity to do this his way, to call his own shots, and to basically help a good city get over the Tebow mania. Speaking about Tim Tebow, um, 
And also speaking about other quarterbacks in the NFL, I think Alex Smith owes uh, owes Peyton Manning, I think, uh, I don't know, maybe a large sum of money or a nice dinner or a night on the town with him and his wife or something because uh, Peyton Manning basically secured his job out in San Francisco. Oh, that he did, and uh, I, I don't know about the money part. I think both of those gentlemen have plenty of money to, to go around on their own. But yes, the fact that Alex Smith was so uh, ready to be knocked out of San Francisco, the team was ready to say, yeah, for, sorry, Alex, uh, we can get Peyton, we're going to take him. Uh, Alex was ready to go down and uh, take a job in Miami. As soon as Peyton announces, yes, I am going to Denver, I'm going to join John Elway, as soon as that happens, all of a sudden now Alex Smith has re-signed with a three-year deal with his coach Harbaugh and the 49ers. So we'll see if he can continue pick up right where he left off. I have a feeling that uh, it could have been a one-year wonder for him, but nevertheless, he got a good deal, a deal that he deserved. He got we'll the three-year deal that he was actually hoping for. But And what's interesting, when you talk to Alex Smith, Alex Smith was saying that uh, nobody ever came out and said officially that it was going to be a three-year deal. He wanted a three-year deal, but all of a sudden, when uh, when Peyton Manning uh, ended up with the Broncos, they said, well, okay, well, there's this three-year deal that uh, Alex Smith never signed, so it kind, of, uh, it kind of went in his favor there, and he got the multi-year contract that he was looking for. One thing that irritates me about this whole Alex Smith, Peyton Manning thing is people saying Alex Smith's psyche's been damaged. People have to realize this is a business. And I'm sure, or at least I hope, Alex Smith realized he's had how many years now to secure himself as an elite quarterback? He still hasn't done it. He had one, I don't even want to say decent season, above average season. So do you, would he really expect the Niners not to pursue a better option? What reason did Alex Smith give the 49ers to want to make him a franchise quarterback? They gave him a three-year deal, yeah, but he's no Peyton Manning. So Alex Smith, I still think he's going to be okay. He'll have an above-average years coming up in these next three years. Nothing spectacular, but with the additions of Manning, Ham, and Moss, I think he'll be pretty decent. I don't think this Peyton Manning thing had any effect on him whatsoever. No, I would have to agree with you on that. I think uh, yeah, Alex Smith is no Peyton Manning. Alex Smith is probably a very strong number two tier type uh, quarterback. Uh, definitely a top uh, 25% type guy. Uh, he'd make a good backup in, in most, uh, in most uh, departments, in, mo in most uh, teams out there. Uh, would make an awesome starter on a team like Cleveland, and he's he, he's holding his own right now over there well, in San Francisco. Well, what might have upset him is that the fact that the Miami Dolphins chose to bring back David Garrard into the NFL instead of resign Alex Smith. So if anything's going to upset Alex Smith and motivate him, it would be Miami passing him up. Yeah, that that was that was a little anticlimactic there with David Garrard reemerging into the NFL and then all of a sudden being picked up by the Dolphins. Although David Garrard, before he had his back problems, had a very strong arm, and uh, and how David Garrard was basically run out of town in Jacksonville was uh, kind of the story of the ages back then as well. Yeah, now the the quarterbacks are all starting to uh, fall in line. You got new t new faces and new places. It's uh, it's going to be interesting to see Peyton in a new shade of blue. It's going to be uh, interesting now to see with Alex Smith officially back where he started, people like Gerard in a new place. It's going to be interesting. The big question is, with Peyton Manning going to Denver, does this mean that Tim Tebow has a new home? Well, you know, and it's interesting you should bring that up because today, and it's, this is still an ongoing scenario as we speak, uh, the New York Jets... Of course, it was uh, strongly suggested, strongly rumored, uh, signed Tim Tebow. However, there was a contract snag. And basically, in Tebow's contract, there's a $6.2 million salary advance, of which $1.2 million has already been paid by Denver. And uh, the difference of $5 million is still advanced against his future salary. And that burden would shift to the Jets in a trade. And uh, the Jet sources are said to believe that the Broncos should owe Tebow that money and not the Jets. So it's actually coming down to dollars and cents right now uh, with the Jets. 
I don't think the Jets are a good fit for Tim Tebow. Only because you've got the brash, swashbuckling Rex Ryan who basically promised the Super Bowl or bust, and of course he has a thing for his wife's feet and everything else. And, uh, you know, and you have that, uh, it's almost like Sodom and Gomorrah over there in New York for this very pious Tebow and Tim Tebow. Uh, I don't know. You know what, you know, Greg, if I can interrupt you, I used to be really, I don't want to say peeved by Joe Namath criticizing the Jets all the time, but it kind of rubbed me the, rubbed me the wrong way. But honest to gosh, I mean, now I'm starting to see it. Why would the Jets bring in Tim Tebow? Well, they just signed what, Mark Sanchez for what, another five years, so they yeah. want to bring in Tim Tebow. What, what are they going to do with Tebow? What, what are they yeah. actually going to do? Yeah, you're just going to set him on the bench and uh, hope for the best? I don't understand this. All right, this is, this is the way I understand it. That from every the only reason I've heard that they could bring in Tim Tebow is the possibility of a wildcat formation of which they've already had been using um, uh, their main man Smith. They've been using him the last couple of years, but now that he has moved on to bigger and better things, they need a new wildcat quarterback. We know the wildcat is going downhill in a hurry in the NFL, so I don't like that. I think the main reason is the locker room. There's lots of locker room issues in New York right now under Rex Ryan. They need to try to clear that up. Tim Tebow is the type of guy who would be able to do it. And a big name like Tebow in that Jets uniform, I'll tell you what, it's going to be the same thing that happened in Denver. You, you have this big name guy, people are going to wonder, Tebow mania is going to wonder why isn't he playing, and Sanchez will be quickly out of a job. But here's the kicker to me. And Alex said this in a tweet earlier today. I'd like to read it because it is perfect. The Jets are interested in Tebow, but they didn't want Manning. Hashtag SMH. I agree. I don't get it. Why would you go after this guy, Tim Tebow, who can barely throw a ball, is only there as a essentially a running back at the quarterback position when you could have gotten arguably the best quarterback to ever play the game? Yeah, I, I agree with that, and that's an excellent uh, tweet by Alex on that regard as well. Uh, the thing, though, that I think a lot of people are overlooking about Tim Tebow is at the end of the season and going into the playoffs, Tim Tebow actually started, started throwing the ball rather well and uh, was yeah, basically getting rather consistent. That, coupled with the fact that he's been working with a quarterback's coach uh, during the off season. I think uh, I think we're going to see a little bit different Tim Tebow out there. Somebody that's going to uh, to throw the ball a little bit more. Yeah, he's still going to have his issues of holding on to the ball. Uh, but you know what? There's another really good quarterback in the league by the name of Ben Roethlisberger that has issues of holding on to the ball too long as well. And both of these players uh, can make plays with their legs. And that's something that uh, there's some really interesting comparisons between Big Ben and Tim Tebow. Well, the thing I find interesting, and I actually want to ask both of you a question, when was the last time you heard of a team trading for a player to fix the attitude in the locker room? When was the last yeah. time that happened? Yeah, yeah, it, like, it, it doesn't, yeah, I mean, yeah we're, we're not talking about a, a proctor here, or somebody to basically keep the kids under control. I mean, you're either gonna you're either gonna play in the NFL or you're gonna coach. And uh, I hope he ends up in Jacksonville. I think it'd be a great story. Yeah, I think it would. Uh, another team that could uh, use the services of a Tim Tebow would be the Rams. Mm -hmm. Rams are definitely in contention. Um, I even look at a team like the Cleveland Browns. Uh, if nothing else, the Tebow mania can help bring uh, some fanship back to uh, some empty seats in a place like Jacksonville or in Cleveland, where the fan the fans' attendance has been down over the last couple of years. He, he can be a benefit on and off the field, without a doubt. I mean, his jersey is the number one seller in the, in the league for a reason, and it's not because it is blue and orange. No, no, it's because the guys are well, very much like Peyton Manning. But go ahead. You know, I still wouldn't. I don't know if I'd want to give up on Sam Bradford just yet. Um, I mean, if they get uh, Tebow for a very low price, a draft pick or whatever, I guess so. But I wouldn't give up on Bradford yet. I guess, yeah, the Browns were another team I was thinking of. But for some reason, Holmgren and all those guys over there seem to do nothing right the last few years. Uh, but I think Jacksonville, 
is the best place for them. Let me tell you why. The Jaguars are on the verge of being relocated. Dawson said it. Tebow's jersey is the number one seller. If they can bring Tebow mania, the Tebow magic, to Jacksonville, it could reignite that whole, the whole football stadium, that whole community. And Tebow's from Florida, that area. I think it would be a perfect fit. The Jaguars were reported to be desperately disappointed when they find out, found out the Jets had acquired Tebow. Something's telling me the Jaguars know Tebow literally, no pun intended, could be a savior for the Jaguars. I have a feeling we're going to see the next few days the Jaguars on the news giving up a lot for Tim Tebow in a well, trade it's interesting, for the Denver Broncos. It's interesting you should say that because the Jaguars really have a ton of money with their cap space right now where they could absorb that $5 million quite easily. Yeah, that's it. where the Jets say, no thanks, I'm not paying that $5 million. the Jaguars will come out and say, oh, you know what, I'll be nice enough, I can do that. And their quarterback position can only improve at this point, well, where you have Blaine Gabbert, Dan Lefever, and Chad Henney as the only quarterbacks on their roster right now. Yeah. Tim Tebow could come right in. Yeah, I mean, let's put Blaine Gabbert up against uh, Tim Tebow. I mean, hands down, Tim Tebow wins that one. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't think anyone's expecting Gab Gabbert to be a big-time player. Let's say, for whatever reason, the Jets decide they will pay that $5 million. Do either of you think the Jaguars are still desperate to try and negotiate with the trade for the Jets to get Tebow? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some, like, three-way trade thing going on here. Hey, I think the Jaguars really want Jackson or really want Tebow. I, I don't think they're going to give up an arm and a leg in their firstborn for him. But, yeah, I think you're right that they'll they'll make a big push. Will it happen? Uh, it depends on how much Rex Ryan's feet wants him. <laughs> well, let's uh, put it this way. Tim Tebow is going to be playing somewhere next year in the NFL. He's just too good of a commodity to basically set out. And you know what? Uh, Mike Holmgren actually uh, can wake up out of his uh, snooze fest up there over his beer and uh, bratwurst I think uh, he could see that uh, Tim Tebow would be a very good addition and somebody that could probably uh, compete with Colt McCoy and uh, get that team going in the right direction up there as well. So much to the chagrin of some of our uh, uh, partners over at WBBW, uh, uh, a.k.a. Brian Alessio, who would basically go running and screaming out of Western Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, if that ever happened, but uh, that's another story for another day. So, well, Greg, I don't think we're going to have to worry about uh, our good friend Ryan going too crazy in terms of what's going on with Tebow because it is now becoming official. Tim Tebow is a New York Jet. Apparently, it appears to be a fourth round draft pick that they are getting back. The Broncos are getting back in trading Tebow. And this just means that uh, Tebow Mania is going to replace Lynn Sanity up in New York. And there's some very mixed emotions about this. You now have Sanchez versus Tebow going for the starting job. But uh, the idea of what is the PR guys doing in New York, as right now you just have a completely dysfunctional uh, system going on up there. You don't know what to expect. They are bringing in a player that they don't need immediately after signing their guy, their franchise quarterback, the Sanchez, the Sanchez Sanchez, for a five-year deal just to bring in the biggest name, arguably, in NFL football. I don't get it, but who knows what's going to happen now at this point, and that's just the way it is. Well, that's about it for the Tim Tebow saga. Uh, we're going to take a break here, and uh, our next podcast is going to be about the uh, New Orleans Saints. I'm Greg Bichot, and Alex DeLaverson and James Dodson, we bid you a good night.